thanks, Lindsay, and thanks to the organizers for the opportunity to present. Uh, and especially thank you to those in the room. I know it's the last session and I appreciate you hanging in with me. I have the usual disclaimer. I'll know that you have finished reading it when everyone's mouths have stopped moving. Good. Avita is a medical device company with a portfolio of products intended to treat a range of skin injuries and defects. The technology originates from Western Australia and we are listed on uh, both Australian and US markets. We have product approvals uh, in major markets outside the US. Our focus in the, in the US is on our US uh, burn, pivotal burn trial, uh, which we'll use to support our PMA application to FDA. And we're anticipating completion of enrollment in that study by the end of this calendar year. Central to this technology is the autologous cell harvesting device. The three different products, Recell, Renovacell, Regenercell, have this component in common, um, but are configured differently in order to treat, uh, uh, in order to, for the capacity to treat areas appropriate to the specific clinical indications. The um, device is used to process a small shave biopsy harvested from the patient's healthy skin. And it goes into that first um, well, which you may be able to see is labeled A. Sorry, I don't have a pointer. And that's for enzyme incubation uh, for 15 to 20 minutes. Once that stage is complete, the tissue sample is rinsed in well B in a buffer solution. It's moved on to the, the tray there, which is a work surface for mechanical disruption of the tissue. That, um, that byproduct or that product is then uh, drawn up into a syringe and run through the cell strainer, which you see in the third well. The enzyme is a proprietary formulation, and it begins the process of separating this tissue into its constituent cells. It's about a 30-minute process in total, and th one of the things that's important about this is that um, the, the disaggregation is really kind of where the magic happens, um, and we have a complete uh, representation of the various skin cell types um, present in healthy skin. The res, or regenerative epithelial suspension, as we call it, is applied according to the clinical indication, typically in combination with, um, with an established technique. You've probably spent a whole week looking at science slides this afternoon. So this is my only one, and I'll, I'll go quick. The upper image is uh, indicative of an acute wound, and cells in, at the edges of an acute wound become activated. They've lost their neighbors. They're seeking to heal. There are uh, fibroblasts in the dermal area, which convert to myofibroblasts, initiating contracture. So the body's natural response is to close this wound. But in many respects, this is a resource-limited response. With the autologous cell harvesting device, we can, in a way, take that process offline. We do the disaggregation of skin cells uh, rather than waiting for the body's own natural mechanisms to do so. And we immediately return back to the patient within that approximately 30-minute time window I referred to a complete suspension of viable cells. This allows for the, the resource limiting uh, issues to be overcome and includes the transfer of melanocytes, which are the body's pigment producing cells, which really help with achieving a normal outcome. To show you an example of the implications for the use of res in burns, this is an 11 month old girl with full thickness injury uh, this is what her wound looked like after excision. And the usual treatment for this is a skin graft. And skin is harvested from healthy areas, uh, uninjured areas. Uh, this is an, a, a painful process and often the most complained about um, issue uh, for burn patients, sometimes more than the burn itself. This image shows a mesh graft and what you want to do as a burn surgeon is minimize the amount of skin you're harvesting to achieve definitive closure in that patient. 
but in a pediatric patient or in an extensive burn, there is a limitation on the availability of skin to be harvested. In the case of the uh, complementary use of res, the mesh graft can be expanded more widely than is, is conventional. And the outcome, uh, the resulting outcome of, that is due to the regenerative epithelial suspension working in the, the spaces within the mesh essentially produces uh, something akin to what you might see for a sheet graft. So we're using less skin to achieve a better outcome. A slightly different modality, also within burns, is the direct application of res to a partial thickness injury. This is where you have intact dermis. The conventional treatment for a case like this is to wait and see, see how things go, um, and then achieve autograft sparing by applying an autograft only to the area that does not heal in a timely fashion. With a device like Resell, instead, because you have the opportunity to expand a small sample of skin to a suspension that will cover 80 times the area, we can do early intervention justifiably, treat the entire area, and avert autografting altogether. And of course, there's a great outcome um, at the end as well. This is Zed Merrick. He made um, he made Sky News in the in the UK after this case, and we caught up with him uh, late last year uh, just to check in. Great little guy. We have a compassionate use program through an investigational device exemption granted by the FDA. This is a case of a patient treated under that protocol. They had burns over most of their body. And in order to achieve closure, typically you would harvest skin, mesh it conservatively, apply the area uh, that you could, cover the area that you could, wait for the donor sites to heal, apply again, you know, through reharvesting of that same donor site, and so on and so on. Here you see uh, a fairly unconventional mesh expansion of one to six. This is very difficult to handle, uh, has a high risk of graft loss and also a risk of poor outcome in terms of um, scar and, and contracture. But with, again, with the adjunct use of regenerative epithelial suspension, we've spared autograft, we've achieved an excellent outcome, including restoration of pigmentation, we've reduced the number of procedures and dramatically also reduced the length of stay that this patient needed in the burn unit. There is tremendous benefit associated with the sparing of autograft. We're working uh, to establish resell as the go-to technique um, within burn care based both on clinical and economic benefit. Part of um, Part of this approach really lends itself toward uh, preparedness for mass casualty. The device is portable and comes completely self-contained. It's a single-use disposable device. This has um, shown itself historically with the use of res in a series of unfortunate mass casualty events, most recently this past June at the Formosa Water Park in New Taipei City. Uh, some 500 young people were burned when um, colored dust was being uh, broadcast into the audience and a shorted speaker wire ignited the powder in flames um, and uh, over 200 patients went into burn intensive care. On the heels of that, um, probably not coincidentally, we have announced an agreement with the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, which is part of the HHS Office of the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness. This, um, this contract has been put in place to provide financial support for Avita to complete the FDA PMA process, most particularly the ongoing U.S. trial. Uh, as well, it establishes through procurement um, an initial inventory. There are contract options within this that provide us a very solid footing uh, for the near term 
in, in terms of the U.S., if the FDA requires a pediatric trial for uh, pediatric indication or requires post-market surveillance as a condition of approval, we will have uh, contract options uh, available to be exercised uh, to support those activities as well. And lastly, there are contract options in place to support um, increases to the, the stockpile that we'll establish and uh, to help in, in case of the need for sur surge capacity. This is the timeline for our program in Burns in the U.S. We anticipate completion of enrollment by the end of this calendar year. Um, we will, uh, we have uh, some short-term endpoints to look at effectiveness uh, in terms of wound closure. We have some long-term endpoints, particularly um, durability of healing out to 52 weeks, which is being looked at as a safety endpoint. Nonetheless, we will, after about uh, 10 months when we have all of the effectiveness data, we'll plan to submit our initial clinical study report to FDA to initiate the PMA process and follow that with a final clinical report once the last subjects have reached the 12-month point. There will likely to be a panel meeting uh, and our PMA process is anticipated to wrap up resulting in a product approval sometime third quarter of 2017. I've talked a lot about Burns, uh, in part to shed light on the on the the news of the recent agreement with BARDA, um, but I wanted to come back and, and talk about some of the other implications for the other clinical areas, uh, and I'll do that by showing a couple of cases. The Renova cell product, which we announced today, has CE mark uh, in the European Union, is a tool for creation of res, again, but with the indication for restoration of pigment. So restoration of pigment is a problem uh, in cases of vitiligo, piebaldism, and also in hypopigmented scar. This particular patient is an, an example from a randomized control trial published earlier this year in the Journal of American Academy of Dermatology, where we had both positive and negative controls in within a depigmented vitiligo lesion. And you can see that the, this is a circumferential lesion, so the positive control is kind of around the side, but you can see the area treated with res had 100% um, restoration of pigmentation. We've also uh, begun getting some early experience in the treatment of venous leg ulcers. This was an early case in Italy, uh, a, an older gentleman with significant comorbidities um, had uh, multiple treatments over the course of that time frame, all of which failed. The, the introduction of this disaggregated population of healthy cells modulated the wound environment, reduced pain and exudate almost immediately. And over time, this wound restarted its own healing process. Uh, so this is uh, an exciting new area for us. We're wrapping up enrollment in a randomized control pilot trial in the UK, looking specifically at venous leg ulcers, and we're about to begin uh, as well a program looking at use of res in diabetic foot ulcers. I wanted to show you this slide primarily to show um, that the numbers are large in these areas, both in chronic wounds and in the aesthetics space, repigmentation uh, and burns. There are substantial opportunities here. We won't be limited um, by, the, um, by the unmet medical need. So for us at this point, um, the to-do list is to, to get the work done, to finish the ongoing and, and uh, the randomized control trials to get the data out on the completed randomized control trials. We are looking to partner to uh, gain access to the feet on the street that this product deserves in order to be able to get it out into the clinical marketplace. Uh, there are a number of, of um, illustrative um, potential partners shown here. So to summarize, we have a product on the market in uh, the UK, in Europe, Australia, China. Uh, we're getting some initial traction. There is a huge market opportunity in the space that we're trying to access. We have a number of ongoing and completed randomized control trials to support the effectiveness. And um, we have uh, an excellent um, multi-layered patent portfolio to protect the, the intellectual property.
we're a passionate group uh, dedicated to transforming lives. And I'll finish just with a, a quick video if, if you care to see it. I know I'm out of time, but if you want to stay and watch this uh, two-minute example of, of the kind of work that we're doing and what inspires us. Can we get some audio? Taiwan's water park fire. Hospitals in the nation's capital struggling to deal with hundreds of burns sufferers have Wood. turned to the renowned the West Australian specialist for help. And a warning, some of the following images are confronting. When a fireball engulfed a massive crowd of dancers at a Taiwan concert, there was no escape. A short-circuiting speaker caused a coloured flammable powder being thrown around the crowd to explode as partiers were filming. Three people have already died and over 500 have suffered burns, forcing hospitals to capacity. Resources are so thin, surgeons have even run out of cadavers for skin grafts. Now two West Australian doctors are on a mission to provide relief to the medical crisis, leading the race to save the hundreds still fighting for their lives. This certainly is, in modern times, one of the biggest burns disasters we've seen. Taiwanese medics turned to Fiona Wood for her groundbreaking resell treatment, a spray-on system to regrow skin she created and used to save 25 lives after the Bali bombings. Dr Wood's colleagues Phil Dubois and Lorraine Glover have taken the life-saving technology to Taipei. It doesn't take the place of traditional skin grafting and other, uh, other skin grafts kind of technologies. Mm. It adds to it. Mm. And the whole, bit, the whole focus is on getting the patient healed fast as possible. Dr Wood says the Australian doctors will stay for as long as they're needed and the effort is making headlines in Taiwan. Vita Medical, yeah, is donating this because it's the, uh, there's a huge need and uh, yeah, if there's anything we can do to help. Paulie, nine news. Thanks for your kind attention.